Okay, we're uh, left off on uh, getting the motor in the bike, make sure it fits. So I went hunting for a swing arm. So he wanted to go up to a disc brake swing arm, which is your 79 to 81. The swing arm bolts right onto an iron, onto an earlier motor. Earlier frame like that, I should say. It has the same mounting system here and here, see, they're identical. Yeah. Beep, they bolt right on. Same thing. The difference is, is the shock mounts are completely different. This motor, this swing arm here, I lucked out and found one that's been already butchered, which in our case is good. The stock mounts come up off of here, and the stock shock mount, instead of being right here, it's more over here, about this far back. So totally different. So this one here has obviously been modified to take regular Harley shocks. It looks like they put them in the wrong spot though, which is not very good. So we're going to compare these here. Yeah, let's, see, let's do it more accurately than that. We used a line on our floor here to line things up. And so, you see, overall length of the swing arm is similar. So this is the axle plate right here. So it looks like this one here was right in this area here. This one here is right here. You can see how the slots are basically in the same spot, so the same length overall. Either design, even though these look like they're longer, they're not. You can definitely see a difference in the width for tire. See right in here versus straight in. So they hit up in this area here. These ones hit, hit real hard here and all the way up. But the shock mount being in the wrong spot, that's going to raise the bike way the hell up in the air for the same shock. So that's kind of weird how they do that. Okay, it's also going to make the shock a lot weaker because it's got less leverage to keep the bike up in the air. Which on heavy ass shocks is not a problem because he's got heavy ass FL shocks on it. The disadvantage is it makes this, this is a lot weaker tubing right here than this. This is a forged, um, forged forging. So this is pretty strong. This is just a piece of tubing. So this will flex a lot between here and here. This has to be reinforced. Stock, they had a reinforcement welded in underneath these axle plates. It was all cut off. So even though this swing arm looks like a good sample to use, these are in the wrong spot. So that's not good for us. I'm upside down too. So here's your chain guard mount. See it's in the same spot. So the chain guard foot's on. Except there's no bracket back here for it because it got cut off. Alright, so. I thought this was going to be pretty good, but it looks like it's not going to help us a lot. But it's something to work from. Okay, we're going to see how this fits on the bike. Do a little more mocking up over here. The right bike's too close, but luckily we got options to move. There we go. It just moved. Yeah, we got more room now. There we go. Look how that was. Camera over here out of my way. Okay. Now these are the parts here for the um, that came off the uh, swing arms. So this is the one that came off his current bike, and this is the set that came off the rusty one. So both bearing races are used and pitted. They were focusing. It doesn't like to focus, does it? So anyway, you can see. You can see it's still focusing way down there. Get the camera to free focus. Anyway, this one here is uh, used and abused. This one here, obviously, a lot more. You can see the uh, pitting in it. Damn, that stupid ass camera will not focus. All right, well, whatever. So, the ones that came out of here, the bearings are nice and rusty, and it's pitted, too. So, about equal quality junk. Okay, let's see. We need some tools. I'm buried where I can't get to. Get to it over here. 
You can look at my shoulder all night, your choice. Okay. There you go. Add a little bit so I can get to it. Okay, now these bearings here. I'll use the ones that I'm not going to use. Okay, both of these were put in backwards, so I don't know which way is correct. You can see how bad the bearing races are on this one. So this one here, the bearings come from the inside, go out. The other one, they were both opposite of each other. So I never can remember which way they're supposed to be. But uh, they go in one way or the other. Okay, so this is your axle nut. This is the part that goes in the back of the case and gauges into it. So that basically just drops down there in the hole. Can't come out. Then we got a bearing. Got a washer with a lip and a dust shield that holds it in. That's all there is to this. My hammer go. Had a hammer. Somebody stole my hammer. Capital fence around here taking the guy's hammer. Can't even see what I'm doing, can you? Okay, you just tap in there. Gotta make sure you get the washer in there where it belongs. Doesn't want to go on. Oh, kind of swing I've got in the way. Okay. We get our spacer from the other side and our bearing on this side. So we go like that. This one's backwards. Okay, where'd my washer go? Huh. Good question. It was here. Lose it. Uh, I had them. Yeah, missing. I gotta go find a set. I'll be back. All right, we're back. I can't find them, so I'll just steal them off to sell the swing arm here. <coughs> just where I had them, but. Maybe I sell the other one, thought it was for both. I don't remember. too hard just until it hits the threads. I have to break it off. 
the lucky it'll catch on its own. We'll start in there. Get started. Nice and loose. Hey, none of that you were looking at. Look at that. Good, good filming there, huh? I missed it all. I did that on purpose. It's a good thing it's only a mock-up. Okay, right now we're a little bit loose. I need to tighten this up with a big socket right here. I'm going to go get one. Alright, now this bolt is not what ties it down, it's the nut, it pulls the bearings together. This is not the right socket either. This be a 1 and 3 eighths or 1 and 7 sixteenths. Out, bring them both, right? Three A's. Where you knock your knuckles off. Almost there. One more. Oh, breaking my piece of plastic. Let's go. It's not tight yet. Doesn't have any pressure on it yet either. Okay, I just feel it now, getting a little drag to it. Not enough, but a little bit. But there's no free plate in it now. Okay, so that's going to be where it's going to sit. Okay, now this is the shocks that we took off of it. I need to put the one back up here. It's time to put the camera on so you can see better. And this is on here. You can see how well it does not fit. These shocks don't fit. So you can see that the you're hitting right here. So you need an open shock like the late ones are to clear. And even then you can see how far the shock stud is off up here relative to where it needs to be to line the shock up. I cheat a little bit by pulling this out. And that'll help a little bit. So we're going to have to use big twin shock studs to get it out far enough to support it. So it can be done, just different. Give these different parts. But these shocks aren't going to work, they're actually the wrong ones. And the, way too high. You can see how the swing arm is now level, it's at the wrong height. So it should be going downhill a little bit. 
On a regular bike, this would be good, but he wants to get the thing up in the air a little bit, so that means it's too damn low. So these are 13 and a half inches. They're way too short, even with a stud move way forward, which probably moved it up an inch. It's not, not enough length. So we need a longer shock. So, more trash on the floor. So these are Sportster shocks here. From way the hell back. These should be 14 and a quarters. Quarter stock length Sportster. So now you got the camera. Now we have the downhill slope of the swing arm here a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. So that's what it takes to make that work. So you can see crap on the floor around here. I'm tripping over things like this here. See, that's how you get out of your walkway. It's just not your way. Okay, so now when you look at the bike, you can see how the swing arm is going downhill in the back there. That's what he wants because he's going to put a longer front end on it. He wants to get the thing up in the weeds. So that'll definitely raise it up a little bit, get up a little bit higher in the air. So it's not a ton higher, but a little bit higher. So that's what he was after. Now what I want to see is what's going to happen when we put a nice big fat tire back here. He wants to make this thing handle. When he makes things handle, he's put more rubber on the ground. So let's see how much rubber can we put on this swing arm back here. The camera is definitely in my way. Okay, so I got two different wheels to use for a mock up. No axle though. First wheel. Yeah. Have to go get an axle. Uh, second wheel. Now these are both off my race bike. Let's see. Get camera over here, get out of my way. Put it over here. Go. All right, so this is a, uh, it's an old Akron rim. It's a brand new wheel I've had for 20 years, never used it yet, only for mock up. So this is a 74 or 73 to 83 FL rear wheel hub, which is what I use on back of Sportsters when you do a disc brake conversion. And this has got a four and a quarter 18 inch rim, and this has a 150. Uh, 18 done up on the back. This tire is from the uh, mid 90s, if not older. So, I want to see where this is going to sit. What kind of clearances we have? tire here will fit with no problem, like I already knew it would. I've used these tires before. It fits in the back of my bike with another swing arm. You have to cut the swing arm though. So you can see how you got clearances up the side there, it's tight. 
and the sprocket right here to the chain here will have plenty of room. Right now it's offset to the other side anywhere. So from this angle, you can see how the tire right now is to the left side of the bike, which is what you do to get more room for your chain on this side. That's how you do it. So if you look at my race bike here, it's the same wheel with the 130 tire on it instead of the 150. And you see how the chain is offset to clear because I had that big wheel back in here. And you see, and you can't really see in there, but there's an inch of clearance between the tire and the swing arm. So you can see all my chain guards cut away up in the front there. That was for the tire to clear. So this is my skinny rim. Now this is the same width swing arm as that we're dealing with. This swing arm is uh, 10 inches longer than stock, but it's the same dimensions width wise. So, this tire obviously fits in with no problem, and you can put fender struts back here to make it work. I used FL struts on my other bike to make it all clear, but uh, you can make the stock struts work too by mounting them on the outside of the frame rail, wherever they went off to. Yeah, swing arm's in the way again. There we go. Struts. So. So these, you put them on the outside of the frame, you have lots of room. So you have room for big ass fenders. You put them on the inside, you can see how they get a little snug in here, like they don't fit. See? Same on this one, still on the inside, you move it to the outside. This way, and you can see how you get your clearances again. So you can use a stock stretch, you just have to move them. Okay, so this is this wheel. So this one will fit with no problem. You can run a 150 or a 160 tire on this on an 18 inch fat rim and you're golden. The rims are hard to get though. You can also use a 4 inch wide 16 inch rim and run a 160 tire also if you want a 16 inch tire. Okay, so that's this one. The other one is I was running a couple years ago until I aged out my tire. So this is on a 5 inch rim instead of a 4 and a quarter, still 18, and we're running a 180 tire back here. So, uh, this is geared for my uh, haul and ass speeds. So for land speed racing on a DOT street tire, 10 years you're out, you can't run it no more. So this tire is about 12 years old now. So even though it's still basically a brand new tire, I can't use it anymore. There's nothing wrong with it. Now let's see if this clears in this one. Okay, so we're back on our swing arm again. And this one's a little bit tighter. Has been a lot tighter. So you can see how it gets right up into the front of the frame up in here. There's your problem, it's right up in that area there. So if you had an offset sprocket here, and you can center the wheel in the bike, you could use this, but being a, a, not an offset sprocket out there to use unless you make it, which I have done in the past, when you offset this tire all the way over to here like I did on my bike to make it clear the chain, you can't run it in a swing arm. If the tire is centered here, it'll fit. And right now it is centered in the frame fairly good. It's a little bit to the left like it should be, but it's good. But you would definitely have to use an offset transmission sprocket here. And on this bike, it wouldn't be that hard to do that. On the earlier bike, it would be a major problem. You can take the regular sprocket here, which, uh, what do we do? Oh, it's over here. You can take this sprocket right here. You cut the thing way down small, and you weld another sprocket to it, and that will offset you three eighths of an inch, because that's how thick the sprocket is. And that would give you enough room to clear a big tire like this, and keep it centered. And still fit in a stock swing arm. So there's ways of doing this stuff if you want to. So we'll give him the options of what he wants to do. But uh, these are all options that can be done if you want to do it. So. You know, he's looking at getting an inverted front fork for this bike. He wants to make it kind of a road race looking style bike. Somewhere between road race and dirt tracker, I'm not sure, but 
anyway he wants to be able to corner and handle with it you're asking a lot from a Harley frame for that but you can gusset the frame up a little bit and put bracing up in here and help gusset these things a little bit and definitely got to do some gussing back here tie this all together and on the swing arm you take the swing arm you put a bunch of gussing under here to tie this thing all together so it doesn't wobble all over the place and you can make it handle pretty good but uh, that's all the work has to be done Obviously, the way it is, it doesn't fly. But, but you can see how you can put a pretty fat swing arm on the bike. I mean, swing a tire on there if you want to. You just have to do a little bit of work. So, anyway, that's where we're at for tonight. So, we'll give him something to look at. Something to dream about in his dreams, I guess. So, anyway, that's it for tonight. Okay, I'm playing around a little bit of mock up here for front end geometry and stuff. So right now with the stock shocks back there like that and my big wheel, we got about seven and a half inches of ground clearance right there. It's flat right now. So that means the frame is level. That's the front tire off my Buell. I tried the 19, but it's way too big in diameter. So this is my Buell Blast here. It's my other race bike. So and the light here. There we go. So there's the same wheel over here on this bike. So this one here takes a little stubby front end on the front of it. So he's getting a 32 inch front end length, which is about what this bike would be. If you had this small tire, which is about 22 and a half inch diameter, which is most sport bike tires are in that dimension, 22 and a half to 23 max. So you got a good selection of rubber, 17-inch stuff like that. And if you put a 17-inch wheel in the back, it would drop down a half inch in the back maybe. That's an 18, so they're a little bit smaller diameter too. So a little bit longer fork, a little front end sag, you'll be about this height when you're riding the bike. So right now with our rake up here, you figure about that much dimension on the top. Down here you're about 31 inches by the time you get way out where the wheel will sit. So 32 would bring you up about an inch. So when you sat on the bike, you'd have a little bit of a sag on it, which would put you about right. So it would want to actually sit about in this height here. Now if you put this big 19 inch wheel up in here, it's hardly a wheel. You can see how much bigger it is. And your bike could go up this way considerably. So to go up half what this is, so that's a good four or five inch difference. So to raise the bike by two, two and a half more inches at least. So I guess the thing way too high, you'd be like a dirt bike. You'd have a over 10 inch of ground clearance in the front of that thing. It'd be way too much. So I'm thinking a little sport bike front tire. We'll make a spoke version though because we like spokes and we can run the 18 like that in the back that'll give them a good handling bike the rake and trail should be decent because it's going to get the rake down to where it'd be decent let's see what the rake would be on that thing it'd be a lot less than my bike at 40. see i run 40 on my bike but i like going forward Yeah, see it's right on 30 degree rig. That's what I thought they were. So you have to see what the trail would be. Should be fairly low trail, so that should make it handle pretty good. Turn good, small wheel, low trail. 30 degree rake though would be should be pretty stable. So it'd probably be about three inches of trail, I bet, something like that. But uh, anyway, that should make it work pretty good. Uh, definitely have a lot of traction, that's for sure. You can definitely, uh, got more tire than you got motor, so we could fix that, though. <laughs> but, uh, well, anyway, something for him to think about, so. Anyway, just something to play with. You gotta figure out what you're gonna do before you do it. So instead of drawing everything on pictures and crap, I just put bikes together and figure it out as you go. Now we get a good idea what happens. All right, that's definitely it for the night.